Well, the subject of uh, SmackDown, I haven't seen the show yet, but uh, if you recall, Sami Zayn won the Battle Royal, and he did, in fact, get his championship match this week. But it opened up with Brock Lesnar doing an interview and basically saying that he was going to challenge the winner of Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn at day one, in case you thought there might be a chance that Sami Zayn would win the title. And he vowed to be there at ringside for the main event. And if you can't figure out what happened, Sami Zayn came out, and it was one of those half-hour segments at the end of the show where I think Sami came down to the ring at like uh, an hour, like 90 minutes into the show, he came out for the match. And then they had so many videos, commercials, previews, raw recap. Uh, Brock Lesnar beat up Sami, another commercial. And then finally the bell rings to start the match at like 56 after the hour. So they ring the bell. Roman Reigns gives him one spear, pin Sami Zayn. That's his big championship match that he got. And so it's Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar at day one. So either that's, they're doing three matches leading to WrestleMania, or WrestleMania will be the third match, or they got something else planned for WrestleMania. Interesting. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the main event. Lesnar was awesome on this show. The the interview that he did at the beginning of the show with Sami Zayn, he was great. And, uh, of course, he's always got Heyman talking for him, so the presumption is that he's not all that great a talker, but he actually did a very good job basically intimidating Sami Zayn into taking the match tonight. They announced that uh, next week it is going to be Sonya Deville returning to the ring, so the long-awaited match with her and Naomi is scheduled for uh, this coming Friday, and not sure if they're going to do... Uh, an angle and hold that off till day one, or if they'll just give it away on TV for free. But that's coming up. Well, didn't they didn't they plan to do that and then end up making it a handicap match the first time? That's what they did the first time. Yes. So they'll probably they'll probably do a match, and they probably should do a match. But there's a lot of ways to get out of it. And I'm, or you know, we also have the announcement that uh, Zia Lee will have her uh, SmackDown debut next week. We had a Los Lotharios Viking Raiders match that went a minute 30, and uh, Nakamura and Boogs are out there, and they tried to distract uh, Los Lotharios, but it backfired, and Los Lotharios won. So they've, they, they were on like five weeks now of them winning, which has mm-hmm. to be a, a record for them. But the Viking Raiders were very upset, but then Boogs played their entrance music, and then they weren't upset anymore. So that was that. Uh, we had Xavier Woods beating Jey Uso via DQ in two minutes. And uh, that led to... What did that lead to? My notes are all messed up here. But anyway, that was quick. Charlotte Flair interview. And uh, they replayed the thing from last week with Tony Storm. And Charlotte basically came out, cut a promo, said she was not going to accept Tony Storm's challenge. Of course, she backs up the ramp, and Tony Storm puts a pie in Charlotte's face, and Charlotte sells it big, so clearly they are going to do that match down the road. Sheamus beats Cesaro, went like three minutes. Sheamus just beat him clean in the middle, so uh, that was that. And uh, it's pretty much the show. So Brock Lesnar, the highlight of this edition of SmackDown, and uh, Brock and Roman coming up at the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. That's a real interesting one, doing... Uh, because On that, day it, one, not even Royal Rumble. Yeah, 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 I know. That's really interesting also, because they've already done it in Saudi Arabia, where, um, I mean, where Roman pinned him. So, coming back, um, it'd be interesting. I mean, I wonder if if they go with the title switch... And have uh, Heyman switch and go to Lesnar, but that breaks up the Heyman Reigns thing, and I don't know that they want to do that. But that has been that has been an mo, you know. If you remember with Brock Lesnar, when Brock Lesnar was the unbeatable champion, Heyman turned on him and went with uh, Big Show and um, took the title from him, which was a last minute decision when Hogan backed out. If you remember, um, they were going to do a Hogan uh, Hogan um, Brock Lesnar match. And then Hogan backed out because he didn't want to do a second job for Brock Lesnar. So they were kind of like, like left with like no match. So Big Show got the match. And then they uh, broke up the Heyman and uh, Brock Lesnar team and put Heyman with Big Show. 
and um, so that's something that they've done in the past. Um, and obviously, you know, the whole build of this, you know, Heyman's been such a big part of the build, and the idea is is that he is a double agent, even though he's, den- you know, he hasn't even, has he completely ever denied it? He does he, or does he beat around the bush on it? Well, I mean, he denies it to Roman Reigns. Yeah, 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 in, in a weird way. But it's always like, there's always that little hedge in there. You know what I mean? It's not like he, Well, sure, the idea is you're supposed to not know right. which I mean, that, side he's on. Yeah, that's part of the whole build for, for you know, of the whole thing. And, um, but what they, I mean, they don't have anything else for WrestleMania other than Drew. And I don't... I mean, they did make it very clear when they did the SmackDown show. I mean, they hammered it home that Brock had been screwed the last time he had faced Roman Reigns. And so they could conceivably screw him again at day one, and then he has to win the Royal Rumble to get one more chance and then get the match at WrestleMania. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I I don't think that's beyond... They do so many rematches that it's the day one pay-per-view. I mean, I I can't imagine them actually considering this to be like a big pay-per-view on par with the Rumble. Yeah, that's why it probably should be saved for the Rumble. Yeah. So, well, that's why I think that maybe he gets screwed and then he has to win the Rumble. Hence, yeah. not doing it at the Rumble. Well, I, I had expected that he was going to win the Rumble. Yeah. You know, um, or they could do it, or or he could win the title. I yep. mean, yeah. Because the one guy who I could see, you know, him losing the title to where there'd be no issue in the sense, I mean, not like there'd be an issue. Roman's going to do what, you know, what's the right thing and everything. But, the idea is, is they're very, very protective of Reigns, but they're also, you know, like Lesnar's the one guy, you know. I mean, they're the two, they're, they're the two highest paid guys in the company. I mean, they're the two, they're the two superstars, you know, as far as that goes. So if Lesnar is, if if Roman Reigns is going to lose, um, you know, by fluke or whatever, Lesnar would be a guy he could lose to, and then eventually win it back from, with the idea that you really haven't hurt Roman Reigns at all. Whereas with a lot of these other guys, they 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 have not done the short term title switch back and forth with because they the idea is they don't want to hurt Roman Reigns' aura of being the you know the focal point of everything and the star of the company. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.